Hey guys, welcome back to the next build mode tutorial thing. Uh, this time we're going to do a little bit more information based, but we're also going to get the actors spawning in and we'll be able to get that all created. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a database of all our buildings. Uh, obviously at the moment we're only going to have the market stall, later on we'll add the cooking pot, but this is how you make it expandable and you can add as many items as you want later on. So we're going to go into our folders and we're going to create ourselves go in, under the blueprint header we're going to create a struct this will be a building info struct and in here we're going to need our id because we will need to grab this table from the table itself and that will be a name uh, then we'll need a name which will be text we will need a static mesh, which will be a static mesh object reference. Then we will need an actor, which will be a actor class reference. If you have this as an object reference and it asks you to have a specific object, a class means you can spawn one in uh, as and when. So we'll save that. Uh, we'll be able to add this later if we need to, but for now, what we'll need is we'll need to grab our build ghost and under the variable we want building info and we can change that to building info struct and click on the little eye and also make it exposed on spawn and that should help out. Uh, so now in our first person character where we would spawn the ghost if we refresh these nodes you can see it now has a building info where we can grab our building grab get the data info and plug it in there so let's create a data table which is under miscellaneous data table and we're going to grab our building info struct and we're going to call it building info DT. We're going to create one just for now. We're going to call it market. And the ID has to match the row name. Otherwise, the ID field won't work at all. And the name, we'll call it market. This is obviously for later on if we choose uh, different things. Uh, static mesh, we're going to want the market stool. And actor, we haven't created that yet. So we go to let's create that now. So we want to create a new blueprint actor. We'll call this market underscore BP. And now we can create market underscore BP. So just as an example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab data table. And we're going to actually choose market. Just so we have some information to fill in. Well, and save. Uh, so now, if we go open up our market BP and add the static mesh in. When we build from the ghost, it should spawn the market static mesh. So uh, we're going to, down here. We're going to do a custom event. I'm going to call it build actor. And we're going to get our ghost. We're going to get the actor transform. And we're going to spawn actor from class. Get the building info from the ghost. Break the info. 
and grab the actor, of course. Connect the transform up to the transform. And click save and compile. Now we just need to pull that, so we're going to do debug key. Again, this would be where you would use uh, your enhanced input, but debug key, left mouse button, and we're going to get a branch. If build mode is on, and you left click, then we want to build the actor. So we go in, press B, and now we can left click, and we can build the market. We're going to create a custom event. We'll call this one exit build mode. So we want if the build ghost is valid. Or we want to destroy the build ghost. We want to set build mode to false. Effectively, the complete opposite of enter build mode. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to invalidate the variable for build ghost as well. Well, and save. So now, in our build actor, we can exit build mode once we actually build. So we can build. And it instantly comes back off and nothing happens until you go back into build mode again. One thing you will have noticed is when we build, it doesn't stop us from being able to build through uh, the market. So you can end up doubling up like this and cause all sorts of effects. So I have built these meshes in a certain way so that they are of a certain size. So if I was to build it again, you can see that it's actually less than two because the grid that I've done is uh, 100 by 100 grids uh, and it is this particular market is a one by two so we're going to need to create a new variable and we're going to call this grid size in the uh, building info struct and this is going to be an integer array which will have two elements in it So if we go back into the building info, and uh, we want x2 and y1. Uh, so we will try, we'll do this and we'll just double check it as well. But in the build ghost, we want to create a box collision. So 
So in our ghost, what we're going to do is under the event tick, we are going to create a box trace for objects. Our half size is going to be our grid size, which is 50 by 50 by 50. And if I set that as for duration and get at our location, we'll have that as the start and the end. And just so we have something for it to show, we shall set it to pawn. But we'll change that shortly. So now when we go into build mode, you can see if I change it to one frame. We have a box which isn't quite big enough. So our half size we need to split. We need to grab our building info and break it. So we need to grab that grid info. We want to set 50 times our grid size in the X. And the same again for the Y. Make sure you change the index on the Y. That was my mistake then. So now you can see the box is showing up as the grid. So if I was to go to the left of it, you'd see it, it fits perfectly. And finally for this episode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the, uh, the collision on the objects itself. So we're gonna need to go to edit and project settings. And under collision and under engine, we want to set up a new object channel. Which I call this building, which will be default response of block. Then if we compile this, we can change our pawn to building. And then if it hits a building, that's the only time that it's going to say true. So you see, uh, all of this is fine, but as soon as it crosses over, it doesn't work because we need to change this. So under the building, we want to set this to custom collision because we want to change the object type to building. <clears throat> now, if you compile and save, you'll have to do this for every building. There's the market, and as we go over, you can see it says true. So what we can do in that case is remove the branch, and we can get our ghost, and set our material. Drag off of the return value, hit select, and make sure you use the plain select. Drag off of there, and we want uh, if it doesn't hit anything, green, and if it does, you want the invalid. Remove the debug box and hit play. So that's green, 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 and as soon as you can't build, it goes red.
create a boolean that says is of can build. Compile it so you can change the default to true. And under the return value, you can do not boolean. And you can set can build to that. Which means that if it's not hitting anything, you can build. And if it is hitting, then you can't build. Under the first, char uh, first person character, if you're in build mode and our build ghost can build, then build the actor. Otherwise, we'll add a print string cannot build. So I'm saying cannot build because I'm not in build mode at the moment. I go into build mode and that's fine. If I'm overlapping, I can't build, but next to it, it's fine. And I think I shall end the video there. So uh, if you'd like the video as usual, please like, subscribe, comment, let me know if there's anything that you want to hear, uh, if you want to see, and if you have any questions, please feel free to join my Discord. I do answer the questions on there as much as I can. And I hope to see you guys next time. Thank you very much.